So today we're going to take a look at Los Patel's rule. Now, Los Patel's rule allows us to evaluate limits of uh, indeterminate forms. Now, we've looked at the indeterminate form of zero over zero before. And we did that uh, earlier in this course, either during um, the CPM unit, the first unit, or during chapter one. Here's an example that we have right here. If we plugged in zero, we get sine of zero, which is zero over zero, zero over zero's indeterminate form. However, we know from the squeeze law that we ended up getting a limit of one. We could also use Los Patels here to work it out. So whenever you get an indeterminate form, we can use Los Patels, which we'll talk about in the details in the next slide. However, indeterminate form is not just zero over zero. An indeterminate form could be zero times infinity, meaning something extremely close to zero times something extremely big. Or zero raised to the zero, or infinity raised to the zero, or something extremely close to one raised to something extremely big, so one to the infinity, or infinity over infinity, or infinity minus infinity. These are all indeterminate forms. And if you have any indeterminate form when you're looking at uh, limits, you can always use Los Patels. Now, Los Patels basically says, if you're taking the limit of a fraction, and the top is zero and the bottom is zero, you can just go ahead and take your limit of the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. Not the quotient rule, just derivative of the top over derivative of the bottom. Now, Los Patels says only at the top and the bottom are zero. However, you can go ahead and uh, extend Los Patels and look at some corollaries, basically saying whether the top's infinity over infinity or anything like that. Uh, you can use Los Patel. So if you ever end up with any of these indeterminate forms, you can use Los Patels. However, Los Patels has to be a fraction before you can actually use it. So let's look here. If we try to evaluate this limit, we plug in 0 on the top. e to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 1. Plug in 0 on the bottom, we get 0. So we get 0 over 0. It's an indeterminate form, so we can do Los Patel's derivative of the top over derivative of the bottom. Now we can try to go ahead and plug in 0. Plug in 0 on the top, e to the 0 is 1. Plug in 0 on the bottom, you get 2 times 1. So in other words, we just get 1 half. So once again, um, I often said earlier, whenever you're dealing with an indeterminate form, you can't determine your answer until you do more work. So Las Patels allows us to do more work to be able to get our answer. Over here, looking at limit as x approaches 1, you plug in 1 on the top, plug in 1 on the bottom. 1 minus 1 is 0. You should remember natural log of 1 is 0, so you get 0 on the top. Plug in 1 on the bottom, you get uh, cosine of pi, which is negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So you get 0 over 0. So you can go ahead and do the derivative of the top. Derivative of the 1 is 0. Derivative of a natural or a negative x is negative 1. Derivative of natural log, you know, is 1 over x. Derivative of the bottom, the derivative of 1 goes to 0. Derivative of a cosine, you know, goes to negative sine. Then we're going to do the chain rule, derivative of the inside. That's why there's a pi in the bottom. We could plug in 1. 1 over 1 is being added to negative 1 is 0 again. Plug in 1 down here, sine of 1 pi, you know, is 0. So you get 0 over 0. So if you still get an indeterminate form, you can do the derivative or Las Patels again. So derivative of the top, remember the top is an x to the negative 1. So when you do your derivative, you get a negative 1 over an x squared. Derivative of the bottom, and we get this. We get a pi squared because remember you got to do chain rule, which gives you another pi times that pi in front. Well, at this point we have a fraction, really over a fraction, so I would simplify that down. Basically we get an x squared on the bottom. Negative over a negative is a positive. Now I try to go ahead and plug in one. Well, it doesn't affect the top at all. It's still going to be one. 
plug in one here, you get a one squared, which is one, times your pi squared, times, plug in one here, you get cosine of uh, pi, which is negative one, so you get negative one over pi squared. So, looking here, try to go ahead and evaluate your limit by plugging in zero. You get sine of zero, which is this, over zero on the bottom. So it's an indeterminate form. So you can do derivative of the top, which is cosine, over derivative of the bottom. Now we'll try to plug in zero. Cosine of zero, you know it's one. Plug in zero here, two times zero is zero, plus one. So we get one over one, or one. It even works when you're looking at limits going off towards infinity. So you plug in infinity, two times infinity, it'd still be really big. Natural log of anything really big is really big. Over something really big, so it's infinity over infinity, which is an indeterminate form. So we can go ahead and do loss for tells, derivative of the top, so it's one over what's after your natural log, chain rule times derivative of the inside over derivative of the bottom, which is 1. Well, we don't really have to put it over 1. Your 2's drop, so you really just have 1 over x. Now we can plug in infinity. We get 1 over something really, really big. You should remember that 1 over something really big is something close to 0, so your limit is 0. Here, plugging in infinity would be e to something really big, which is infinity. Plug in infinity here. Natural log is something really big. It's still really big. Infinity over infinity. So you can do loss for tells. If you do not get an indeterminate form, you cannot use loss for tells. So you do the derivative of the top. Well, derivative of e to the x is still e to the x. Derivative of the bottom. Derivative of natural log, you know, is 1 over x. Well, instead of dividing by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. We end up getting x times e to the x. Now we go ahead and try to plug in infinity. Plug it in here, we get something really big times e to something really big. Infinity times infinity is really something even bigger, so it's infinity. So it's infinity minus infinity or infinity divided by infinity that are indeterminate forms. And infinity times infinity is not. Looking over here at the right, looking at your limit as x approaches infinity, plug infinity on the top, you get infinity, plug it in on the bottom, you get infinity, it's an indeterminate form. So you do loss of tells, derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom. Now you try plugging in infinity, two times something big is infinity, e to the infinity is infinity, still indeterminate form, so you do loss of tells another time, derivative of the top is 2, derivative of the bottom is this. You plug in infinity, it doesn't do anything at the top, it's 2, plug it in in the bottom, it's something really, really big. 2 divided by something really, really big, you should remember, is close to 0. So, looking at this limit here, we try to do plug in infinity in the top, and plug it in the bottom, we get infinity over infinity. We do loss of tells, derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom. Remember, the bottom is an x to the 1 half. You put the exponent in front of 1 half, decrease your exponent by 1, you get negative 1 half. So that's why it's uh, root in the bottom. So now we have a fraction over a fraction. And so dividing by a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal. And it just simplifies down to this. Now, keep in mind, you have an x to the 1 half on top. You have an x to the first in the bottom. You can simplify that because you really have an extra x to the 1 half in the bottom. So it's really 2 over the square root of x. Now if you plug infinity in, it does nothing to the top. Plug it in in the bottom. Square root of something big is still something big. 2 over something really big is 0. Oh, well, if we try plugging in infinity, we get infinity here. Plug it in here. And we get pretty much the top and the bottom being the same. So it'd be natural log of 1, which is 0. Infinity times 0 is indeterminate. So now we can try to use loss for tells. But loss for tells only works with it being a quotient. We do not have a quotient here. So we got to look at this as 
not multiplication, but division. So instead of multiplying by x, we can divide by its reciprocal. Normally, we do it the other way around. Instead of dividing by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. But you can work it backwards, too. So the bottom is 1 over x. Now, the top, remember, is a natural log. But we have the natural log of two things divided. So you can go natural log of the first minus natural log of the second. Now I might want to try doing loss or tell. So I do the derivative first, which would be 1 over that. Chain rule would just be times the derivative of the inside, which is 1, doesn't change it. Minus 1 over this, with the chain rule of 1, doesn't change it. Remember, the bottom is x to the negative 1. So you do your derivative, you get negative 1 over an x squared. We have a quotient, but I probably want to go ahead and simplify the top first. So I'd have to do a common denominator, multiply the first fraction top and bottom by an x plus 1, second fraction top and bottom by an x minus 1. So write the whole top as one big fraction, and we end up only getting 2 over your common denominator, all divided by that negative 1 over x squared. Well, we have a fraction over a fraction, so you know instead of dividing by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom. So you take the bottom, flip it upside down, and you get this. So we really end up with, I put the negative up here on top, a negative 2x squared over your x squared minus 1. We're looking at our limit as x approaches infinity. Remember that that ends up being most influential over most influential, and that this simplifies down to just negative 2. One more here for this first part of the video. So if we look at this, if we plug in 0, 1 over 0, you should know is infinity. Here you plug in 0, you get 1 over 0. So in other words, you get infinity minus infinity, which is an indeterminate form. So we should be able to use Las Patels, but remember, with Las Patels, you have to write it as a fraction, one big fraction. We have two fractions, so basically you have to do a common denominator. Multiply the first one top and bottom by sine x, second one by x, and we get this. So with this in mind, we want to make sure it's still an indeterminate form. You plug in 0 on top, plug in 0 on the bottom, you get 0 over 0. So it is still indeterminate form, so we do Las Patel's derivative of the top, cosine of x, minus the derivative of x, which is 1, over, oh, on the bottom we have variables times variables, so we have to do product rule, derivative of the first, which is 1, times the second, plus the first, which is x, times the derivative of the second. Now we can try plugging in 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, minus 1 is 0, Plug in here, 0 for x, you get sine of 0, which is 0. 0 times anything is 0, you get 0 plus 0, which is 0. Still an indeterminate form, so we can do Las Patel's again. Derivative of that 1, you know, is 0. Derivative of a cosine, you know, is negative sine. Derivative down here, derivative of a sine is cosine, plus, oh, looking at the red, you have variables times variables, so you have to do product rule again. So we end up getting this when we do the product rule there. Notice on the bottom, you can simplify. You get a cosine plus a cosine, so we get this. Now we can try to plug in our limit, plug in 0 on the top. Well, sine of 0 0 with a negative is 0. Plug in 0 here, 2 times uh, cosine of 0, which is 1. 2 times 1, you know, is that. Plug in 0 here, be 0 times anything, which is 0. So you get 0 over 2, which is 0.